Hey guys, what's up? DJ's Aviation, welcome to another video of mine. Today we're going to be doing another episode to my Aviation News series, and today we'll be covering the concept aircraft and futuristic aircraft that is the Boeing 797. That's its current name at the moment. It may change to something different if it's actually released, uh, but it's widely known, as I mentioned just then, as the 797. So right now, this Boeing 797 is a paper plane, and a paper plane is a concept aircraft existing purely in hand-drawn sketches and digital pixels. Images of what um, people believe the 797 will look like will be on your screen throughout the video. Again, it could change over time, but they're pretty much basing it off the largest and newest Boeing 737 jets and the 7878. In some of the images you can see there's also a resemblance to the Boeing 757 which is quickly being taken out of all fleets. So it'll be kind of nice to see another 757 jet with airlines even though it'll be called the 797. Uh, so the aircraft manufacturer could green light this next gen jetliner um, as early as next year with the first commercial flight beginning in 2025. However that is subject to change. Uh, analysts estimate the 797 project will cost between 10 billion and 15 billion to develop. The seat count of this twin aisle Boeing 797 is expected to be around 225 passengers, assuming a two-class layout of business and economy, or as many as 260 in the all-economy floor plan, favoured by low-cost airlines. And as mentioned just before, airlines are only going to be offered around two variants of the 797 jet, that being just economy and one of business and economy. Details are still few and far between, but Boeing has already said they've talked to 57 potential customers. And one of them is Indian low-cost operator SpiceJet, and they're apparently very, very interested in the new jet to relieve airport congestion and open new routes from South Asia. A large slice of the Boeing 797's market will be direct transatlantic routes between the US and Europe, a corridor which low-cost airlines are seeking to dominate through the combination of cheap fares and relatively short travel times by Australian standards. As we know, the 737s are the backbone of the domestic Qantas and Virgin Australia fleet. So this 797 is hopefully going to change the game completely. I wouldn't be surprised if we do see Qantas and Virgin Australia place orders for this 797 jet when released. Because by then their 737s will be aging. It's really got to do with what the 797 can do for Qantas and Virgin Australia in the long run. It's estimated that the range of this 797 will be around 10 hours of flight time. So not as long as the 7879, but still a very good uh, range for this sort of aircraft and what we're looking at doing. Um, Boeing have also remarked that there's a chance this aircraft could fly until 2060. However, once again, that's subject to change greatly and it's going to, to depend on how many orders they're looking at. Boeing have stated that they would like or have estimated around 4,000 orders for this aircraft in the entire period it's flying. So if we're looking at when they said they were going to start it, maybe 2025 to 2060, which is a rapid change from the likes of the 747 or A380 life, where we usually see it around 20 years. However, they're expecting the life of this aircraft to be exceeding that by a long margin. So let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. Do you believe this aircraft is the perfect solution to removing congestion from really, really busy routes like Melbourne to Sydney? The transatlantic routes from Europe to the US, which is covered now by the 767s, uh, 747s, and A380s. We could change that and put more airplanes on. Of course, that would mean airports would most likely have to expand, but with the ever growing population, I can definitely see more and more airports, just like the plans for London Heathrow, to gradually expand. Uh, whether that's going to take another 10 years or 15 years, I think they'll have to also base it off when the 797 will come in and how many firm orders have actually been given before they get the green light to expanding all the airports. So thank you very much for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed this video of the Aviation News Series. Later on in the week, I should have the future of Virgin Australia or what is going on with Virgin Australia. I haven't really decided on that yet, nor have I started recording. Uh, probably tomorrow I will end up piling together the information. Uh, that was a requested video, that's why I'm doing it. So thank you very much for watching once again. Leave a like if you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.